Hello students, this is your facilitator, Mr. Cassier Rich. I hope in this lecture, which is about curriculum development process, basically we're going to use the skills model because it brings out the process. We've looked at other models, we've looked at Carl's model in the previous lecture, Carl's model, uh, Ilda Taba. Wheeler's model, and I've also looked at um, uh, Tyler's model. So we started with the Tyler's model, and we agreed that the Tyler's model basically has four steps uh, when you're developing a curriculum, and um, these four steps are linear, uh, beginning with uh, the purpose, followed by the content, methods, and the last part is evaluation. And uh, we also agreed that in this linear, in this Tyler's model, it is linear and sometimes we refer to it as the objective model because the target is to see that the set objectives are achieved. Then from there, I also looked at the Wheeler's model. We lose at, uh, looked at Hilda Taba and also tried to look at Carl's model, which illustrates the interrelationship of um, um, curriculum elements. In, this present, in today's presentation, that by the end of this presentation, this is what we should go out with. By the end of the presentation, at least you should be able to identify the steps followed in developing a curriculum using skills-based model. Describe a persistent and more pressing problem in your society that needs an education intervention. Point out the actual cause of the problem using special analysis. Suggest the tentative solutions to this problem. And then five select the most appropriate solution or solutions and design an education program stroke curriculum to solve that problem let me try to draw more light on the issue of select the most appropriate solutions it is better if you raise up one solution than having many because sometimes when you state many you might end up even failing and it is also very important that in the um, Point three, what is the actual cause? Take an example, if in our community we have early pregnancies in our community, what could be the cause? The causes could be many. Could be poverty, could be maybe the students are, are it could be as a result of lockdown, they're no longer going to school. Um, it could be maybe the students are find the school very unfriendly. You as a, a curriculum designer, or as my students are training to become curriculum designers, not only classroom teachers, but designers as well as implementers of the curriculum, you need to uh, do a, what we refer to as situational analysis, try to find out what is the real cause then it is from the real cause that you will be able to suggest the tentative solutions and this will guide you in the formulation of the objectives uh, for our formation of the program, uh, the content, so on and so forth. So that is what we hope to achieve by the end of this. First we need to define what is curriculum development process. And the uh, we so far looked at what is curriculum development and here we are basically looking at um, the skills model and uh, how it helps us in uh, developing a curriculum. Basically, the uh, sk uh, Professor Skillsbeck's model has basically five steps and it shows that curriculum designing is a continuous process. Once the curriculum is rolled out, uh, if, um, evaluation of the implemented curriculum begins. 
and after a certain time you need to go back and make a curriculum review that will call for an curriculum renovation of which the, uh, this is to be covered in the later courses mm, and in another year not not this first year so the first step is situation analysis what do we actually do under situation analysis in the situation analysis you need to go to the ground where the problem is happening collect some data this data can be collected sometimes could be in, you can collect two you can use tools like a questionnaire you can use the interview you can collect data even from the documents that you'll be able to find within the community and then look at the education system has there been any intervention for such a problem if it has ever been there why did it fail then the learners and the teachers on the ground who will be the facilitators of this program and who is the intended target your learners take an example in a community might be having jiggers but if the problem is jiggers who should be the first person to contact that will pass the message to other people whom do you teach or do you need to teach are you going to teach the school going children are you going to teach the cultural leaders so that they can pass the message to other people are you going to call consult the the politicians so you need these questionnaires will help you to identify the information needed what has so far been done where have they failed and what do you need to do secondly once you've done that very well this will lead you to knowing what is the exact problem within that situation take an example we've had very many interventions of improving the welfare of the youth even the uh, the average ugandans we have we had cases of entanikwa then uh, skills uganda wealth creation um youth livelihood now we have the parish model all these are interventions by the government so if your problem within the society is that there is persistent poverty among the youth you need to identify some of the interventions that have been made why is it that this problem is still there so from there you now after identifying the real problem now you need to go to goal formulation what is now the purpose of that program that you desire to design so you state your goal formulation and they give it a time frame so the goal uh, when after forming a goal your your goal for example i hope to have the training for a week so by the end of that week these learners should be able to do a b c and d so within the goal you also try to identify some of the uh, some of the specific learning outcomes that if i teach the youth for example the culture of saving what should be the learning outcome how is this learning outcome related to the goal some of this information we covered it when we are looking at the elements of curriculum where we said that the element of the curriculum one of them is the purpose and is there from the purpose that we break down in the aims the goals then learning outcomes uh, course learning outcomes and specific learning outcomes or competencies so the statement of the expected learning outcomes aligned with the educational gaps found out during the social analysis so it is social analysis first after you have identified the gap for example um the youth in maybe this community are poor because they don't have skills they are not working they don't have skills then the goal would be maybe by the end of this course the learners should have changed attitude towards work or towards vocational skills because they are missing vocational skills then from the goal formulation you would form learning out uh, 
learning outcomes, the course learning outcomes, and the spe uh, specific learning out outcomes. There is a difference between uh, course outcomes that comes at the end uh, throughout that that change the, those outcomes that you will achieve um, throughout the course and that will also help you in the, in the life after school, after training after going through the training then you have those specific learning outcomes or the competences that whenever a small component is taught within that day you learn something and you go with something so take an example learners are able to develop communication skills if for example i've mentioned that they don't have skills and they in vocational skills then they also have a problem they cannot easily communicate so in one of my um my content the topic we have communication so under communication i have a competence by the end of this presentation or by the end of this lecture or by the end of this lesson uh, the learner should be able to communicate freely with one another so that is goal that is a step two from goal formulation now we come to program building program building involves a number of activities as you can see in this slide so that is the time you try to design the teaching and learning activities. Sequencing of the content. What methods are you going to use? The scope. All that is covered under program building. So you now develop the materials that are going, you are going to use to see that these youth are able to transform from the youth who are unemployed who are poor the youth who at least can have something for for survival then after deciding this you have the study materials these materials can be in form of written text they can be videos basing on what you believe that this will bring out what you intend to teach and also basing on the target population The target population might be the youth who are very much maybe interested in something like music, videos, and uh, you might need to have some materials that inform, that are, in, uh, that are in videos, that you might also need some music somewhere to capture the attention of the youth. And then, still under program building, we try to design appropriate institutional settings. Take an example. The program is about in uh, teaching ICT in a community, but in our community we don't have an. Um, there's not even a single computer lab. There are no computers. Then you need to identify and design appropriate institutional setting. Is this course or program being? Is it going to be taught in a laboratory? I'm going to. Am I going to have a workshop? Or it is field work? You need all to decide at this time of program building. Then the personnel training, deployment and role definition. You need facilitators. You may not be able to teach all the communities. So you need to train people who help you in training others. So sometimes we could refer to this as master trainers or trainer of trainers. So you deploy them, you give them what they have to do. Fixing timetables and provisioning. So if it's that on this day we have to teach this, this and the other. And all this as you are plan planning them, you are guided by the first step of situation analysis. You conduct the situation analysis, you go to know that maybe this course the people I'm, I'm targeting of working class they can maybe be available on a saturday and at what time so if they are available in the morning 
then maybe I'll be able to, to teach them. If they're of old age, what is their attention span? Do I need to teach them for three hours or less than three hours? Or if all that is that, uh, do I have the resources to feed them if they need food? So if there is no opportunity of providing them food, then it is better that you design a program that will be there during morning hours and after morning hours you let these people go or in the afternoon after they have eaten food from home so that you don't incur the cost all this information you can get it through situation analysis you get to know the target population and it will inform you even when it comes to uh, program building so we move to another step you've now designed your materials your materials need to be tried out. That's what we refer to as priority. You sample, you take a sample. You might not be able to go through all schools, but you do a sample. You sample some few schools. After sampling some few schools from their comments, you sit down and make corrections. It is still under a priority that Teachers organize learning activities and integrate them into the classroom situation. These um, my, uh, trainers you've trained at that at the initial at the other stage of uh, program building. Now they are also helping you to to train these to effect this in the classroom situation. Then another step is monitoring, evaluation, and feedback. So you design the monitoring and communication system. Who is going to monitor to see that all the activities are done as planned by the curriculum designer? What mechanisms are there to monitor the teaching of this program? Take an example in a school setting. We have monitors in the, at the ground, like um, the head teachers, the DOS. If you are training these people and you have started implementing it at a lower level, how are you monitoring the activities? Are you taking attendance? And then, how do you communicate what you have found out in the field? Because you might design a very good curriculum, but when the monitoring mechanism is not good, it can fail at that stage. Then you also preparation of assessment schedules. How are you going to assess whether the program is effective or is not effective? So you monitor, you evaluate the progress of the program. Then from the progress of the program, the feedback you get informs you of more collections that you need to, to work on the, in, the, in the curriculum. Sometimes you might need to reconstruct a curriculum. So the curriculum development process is a continuous process that when it is designed like now, after I've designed everything, you can reach a point when you realize that maybe there's something you had forgotten and needs to be included. Let us look at an example of the curriculum of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship initially had two papers. But during the implementation stage, that is when, uh, as they, they made the evaluations and the feedback, they realized that this uh, entrepreneurship needed to have, uh, needed to have um, a practical, a practical paper, and that's why they have paper, paper three. All this is done in curriculum development. What you need to note that. Curriculum development is a continuous process. You roll out a curriculum, it is institutionalized and implemented in schools at the national level. You go back and review. You continue from the feedback, maybe feedback from your name, feedback from other stakeholders, like we have your name, feedback from the Ministry of Education, feedback from the employers 
All the, that feedback you get helps you to improve on a curriculum and that calls you for a review of a curriculum. So thank you very much. In case there are some questions, I will be ready to receive the questions on either my WhatsApp number or you can text me um, 7053614400. Thank you.